Uh, welcome to this talk on the magic of social media. Okay, so many of you might be wondering what spurred me to conduct research on social media in education. Well, for a start, social media has been thought of as uh, what the editor of International Journal of Instruction and Technology says as web-based Socratic dialogue. And when I first read this bit of research, I thought, well, it's very interesting. Socrates, you know, what we use in terms of education, when we use uh, the questioning technique, for instance, in the classroom. And um, I also found out that the British Council, for instance, uh, greatly endorsed social media in terms of being able to connect, communicate, and collaborate with their teachers. Yes. And even our schools, for instance, if you have been to MOE seminars, uh, especially the MOE seminar of this year, Dunman Secondary School has rewarded students for designing iPad applications. And in Nanyang Secondary School, they are dishing out iPads, free iPads to the students. And we don't even need to buy iPads anymore if we belong to these schools. So you can imagine how pervasive it is these days. So I decided, therefore, to take a look at whether social media is really, really effective in terms of learning. Uh, what are the most common uses of social media in language learning? May I have a show of hands, actually, how many of you do use Facebook in Facebook and uh, WordPress? Oh, okay. You use it for your courses. Do you enjoy using it? Yes? Very much so. Very much so, okay. I'm just me. Uh, the students as well. Okay, great. We, we have one other person who uses that. And uh, through research, I found that Facebook is commonly used to create groups for classroom posting and to post interesting pictures, video links, etc. Do you do that? Yes. Okay. Then for WordPress, I found out that the very common use of WordPress is to create stories, worksheets, to create reading <coughs> passages, embed sound links, etc. And for iPhones, oops, iPhones and uh, iPads to enhance vocabulary and pronunciation through dictionary apps and to enhance writing through writing apps. Move on to the next slide, please. Uh, in digital newsletter cells, and in a moment I'm going to share with you what cells is all about. Some of our cells uh, colleagues are here as well. Okay, we use Facebook for other purposes. Uh, for instance, in digital newsletters, we use Facebook for, uh, as a platform for giving feedback on one another's words for comments and you know, giving a resource list of musicals and videos. And WordPress for uh, writing school newsletters and embedding videos to give feedback with a pedagogical function. And iPhones for easy microblogging. Move on to the next slide. Okay, so my research topic is how Facebook, WordPress, and YouTube contributes to learning effectiveness as perceived by the student teachers to create such blogs. And to find out about the learning effectiveness of social networking tools, I measured learning effectiveness by asking students to rate on a scale of 1 to 5 on social media with respect to writing. Right, so it's mainly writing. We do other things in cells. Uh, we do speaking, we do writing, and we do grammar. We actually, uh, you know, use use Facebook as well as WordPress to encourage the students to create school newsletters so that we can enhance them with all this. Right? Okay. What is cells enhancement course, and what do we do in cells? Besides school newsletters, we also have storytelling. Uh, coordinated by Ms. Papo Fong, who is not here today. Journalism, who is coordinated by my colleague here, Mark, and school newsletters. <coughs> and in digital newsletters, our learning objectives are to enhance these three areas through writing school newsletter blogs. <coughs> so I will take you through some of what we have done. Okay, uh, I created this blog together with Pratima with the help of Fatima. Without her, I, I don't think I will be able to create this blog. Right, so thank you very much. And um, I asked the students of the five TGs to upload their newsletter blogs. Please click on TG1 newsletter blogs upload. 
and let's click on fashionistawordpress.com. As you can see here, right, uh, student teachers include like pictures and uh, they did a survey on teachers dress code. They went around asking people, what do you think of teachers dress codes? Because some of them felt that they couldn't be wearing nicer, brighter clothes, dresses. Uh, and they wanted to find out whether everyone else felt the same way. So they uh, came up with survey questions like this. Right? And they had to write it in standard proper English without sounding too casual. But at the same time, they must make sure that their grammar is okay. And how do they make sure that their grammar and their writing is alright? How do they keep audience in mind? Uh, well, what happens is we ask another group to look at this group's newsletter writing. We ask them to do peer feedback with each other. Okay. Okay, this is another newsletter created by my student teachers. Can you please move down? Uh, these students belong to another group. They are not uh, they are not necessarily the same group of fun fun fit, but they are giving their opinions of this group fun fun fit. All right, uh, how the newsletter is and what it was done, how how it was well thought out, the data that was presented. Please click on the play button. In our opinion, the newsletter is very well thought. The data that was presented in the newsletter supports the idea that it was to be brought across. It allows the reader to have a clear view of the intended research question. Paragraphs are short and concise, which makes it reader friendly. Remember, it's like a read throughout the entire newsletter, and the use of standard English was consistent. Right. So students wrote their essay or their article. Students from another group give critique on that particular essay or article based on a survey and then they uploaded their newsletter blogs onto my uh, overall WordPress <coughs> website. Now move on to the next slide please. Uh, so my research was based on this. After they did all these things, rate the effectiveness of Facebook-like features such as the comment box for writing feedback because after a whole article is written, there are comment boxes for them to rate, right? And they can even do the Facebook like button. Rate the effectiveness of WordPress in presenting your blogging or writing in newsletters and rate the effectiveness of using iPhones for microblogging. Microblogging meaning that uh, with the iPhone, you can actually install the WordPress application, right? And then uh, instead of going to the computer and do the blogging. It's easier to just switch on your iPhone, click on the application, and then uh, delete a few words or add a few words as and when you please, if you are talking about microblogging here, right? So I asked them to rate their effectiveness from their perception from one to five, five being the most effective and one being the least effective, right? And these were the results. Students really enjoyed using the Facebook-like features such as like button and comments button. And 87.6% uh, enjoyed using WordPress and 82% enjoyed using iPhones because they said the iPhones is very convenient. Sometimes they may just want to add a sentence or delete a word here and there. It may not necessarily be the case that they want to add chunks of words, so that's what they use the iPhone for. Move on to the next slide, please. All right. I also included the Digital Newsletters Facebook page. Uh, the teaching objectives, yes, she clicked on it. The teaching objectives uh, being that I wanted to share 
uh, resources to do with vowels, pronunciation, to enhance the aspect of speaking in digital newsletters. Uh, all right, the student teachers, in their little comments on the survey for me, uh, proclaim that, you know, proclaim some pros of the Facebook like button. For instance, if they posted their newsletter article and they see a little like there, they feel very happy. It's like their work is being acknowledged. It's, uh, that's the reason why probably that the Facebook has a Facebook like button for anyone and everyone. And I was thinking if we incorporate Facebook, you know, insidiously, just like that to the students, they do not find it so intimidating when they receive comments from their peers. Right? So it boosts the confidence of the writer. And if students are just shy, they don't want to comment in long sentences, they can just say, I like this. Move on, please. Now, uh, there's also the feeling of, of inclusiveness because uh, when you give comments, it's very encouraging for the author because Facebook is like a chat medium. It's just like saying, hey, I like this thing about your article, but uh, you know, they do not look as intimidated as though you are correcting someone else's work. Uh, some cons of the Facebook like button, it doesn't give a clear indication of why the person likes uh, the essay or article that has been written and that you know, defeats the purpose because we want the student teachers to be able to give feedback readily. Right? And it is disruptive because we have to lock in to like it. You realize that you cannot just like whatever it is that's written there. You have to actually lock in. You have to have an account in the first place. So these are the disadvantages of the Facebook like button. I feel that the Facebook or WordPress comment function have an extremely important pedagogical tool. I do not necessarily actually use Facebook for just creating groups of classes and seeing what's going on with my students. I use it to connect it actually with my PhD topic, which is about uh, commenting on peers' work, peers' essays, written essays, blogs, etc. Right? And uh, I've shown you how they did that. Now, why did I do that with this particular bunch of student teachers? Why did I do that? Can anyone share with me what you think? What was in my mind when I created this? What did I want them to do? Why did I want them to upload their video on commenting their peers' work? Anyone has an idea? Critical thinking, yes, okay, but it's videoing of yourselves. Razi, you don't hide there, come out and... and um, I think it's, uh, it's useful for us as future teachers to reflect on how we give feedbacks. Uh, so when we give feedback to our students later on, we know that we have done it in a proper, positive manner. Positive and professional manner, right? Because you're able to view yourselves, right? As you're giving feedback, right? So, um, next slide, please. Okay, without further ado, I would like to now invite my tutor, Mrs. Audrey Cheng, to share about how she created Facebook for use with her students and how she brought it beyond sales to create feedback for her own students. And after Mrs. Audrey Cheng has presented, I would also like to invite my own student teachers to share about how they benefited from the use of social media in their own classrooms. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, indeed very honoured to be to be uh, to be asked by uh, Angelia to uh, to share on, on my part. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, doing this sales course very much. Uh, it's been two years, um, and this time for this year, uh, I've been asked to to also uh, uh, join in uh, 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 adding some some uh, posts on Facebook. So. Um, uh, so these are some of the posts that I have uh, that I have made with the students. Uh, May 13th, right? May 13th, that was during the sales period. Yes, yes. That, uh, this is during the sales course. And uh, so uh, I, so this, these Facebook posts are an addition to the, to the uh, uh, blogs that we did on WordPress. So 
uh, uh, so here we added, I found some uh, songs that we were using as part of the course uh, for the teaching of English. So I, I, so I uploaded these here. And uh, besides songs, uh, there were also other pronunciation uh, sites that I found. And so uh, this is a very useful uh, uh, platform for me to, to give them additional stuff. Uh, and then uh, in between, uh, I, uh, we, we had some, uh, some uh, uh, forms of uh, informal uh, interaction with the students. And I found too that, that uh, uh, this was also a very good platform for the students, uh, having a, a Facebook page for their own TG here, uh, for them to interact with one another. And uh, as you know, these students come from different TGs all over NIE. And so uh, they, they, after this course uh, is over, I find that uh, many of them are still using this, this particular page uh, uh, for interaction and uh, they even post their personal pictures and so on. Like, uh, like uh, one of them posted his uh, Hari Raya uh, home pictures and uh, there was a lot of sharing done. Uh, I remember that uh, during, one of, uh, during the course, there was one boy who, whose uh, fish died and uh, he, he is a real fishing, a, a fish, uh, aquarium fish enthusiast. And so we, we had a bit of a, a conversation there uh, uh, and uh, because he was so, so down and so, so, I, so one thing led to another and, and I ended up counseling him to do volunteer work and, and all that. So I find that this is a very good platform uh, for bonding as well uh, be between teacher and student. And uh, uh, so this is the, the thing that I, I, I get out of this, out of Facebook. Uh, um, and uh, Angelia has uh, asked me to share also what I do uh, in, the, uh, in, my, in my interaction with my students. I, I manage uh, an education center, a private center outside. And uh, uh, I, I started uh, interacting with my students two years ago uh, on the request of some of my <coughs> former students. At first, I was like, oh, no, it's, this kind of thing is for kids. But, uh, but uh, my students who had left, they say they, they wanted to, to, to connect with me, to, to continue our, our, our uh, uh, friendships. And so, so that's, that was how I started this. And then, uh, so at first, it was my personal Facebook uh, page uh, with friends and relatives and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, students. And then later on, it, uh, I, I found that I had to separate separate uh, my uh, students' uh, interaction with, with uh, that of my friends. So, so then I created another one. So I'd like to, to just uh, show you uh, uh, some of the things that, that I've had and uh, some of the teaching and learning uh, pointers that I'm still learning and, and uh, just to share. Mm -hmm. for, the, for, for this particular uh, 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 Facebook page, this is only for my students. I, I have uh, restricted it and not for, not for the public. So uh, in this page, I, uh, I uh, 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 sort of uh, post announcements and notices. And also, uh, it's for the students to post their, their essays to me, their homework. So I would get them in the middle of the night, especially during the old levels. How do you do the posting of homework? Posting yes, homework? yes. I have one student who says he doesn't know how to use Hotmail. He says he's so used to, to so Facebook. Nice. So we post, post them here. Uh, so I find that with these students, uh, they, uh, it's like become their life because now they've got their iPhones and their, and their smartphones. So they, they, uh, they uh, keep uh, looking at their, they, they, they keep uh, uh, sort of blogging and twittering on their, on their phones. So, so this is very, very much part of their culture. Uh, so, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is the, this is, uh, these are their posts. Uh, okay, so um, the pointers that I'd like to take away with this is um, from, uh, from a learning point, many of these students, like uh, Shi Liang, Man Ling, uh, uh, many of them, they are from the normal academic stream and a couple from the normal technical stream. And uh, I, I can see from the time I taught them uh, for for three to four years, I've seen their growth. I've seen how, uh, how Facebook provides a very informal and engaging platform for them to improve on their English. And, uh, uh, and one thing I, I note is, uh, is 
when they when they put these posts, they use proper English. But when they write the compositions for me, I have to keep correcting their grammar and so on. Uh, is that a post? I thought they wouldn't use proper English. Yeah, she she used the ED and all that. This girl, this girl's from from the normal academic stream. So, so that, that is one, one uh, advantage that I see with, uh, with Facebook. Um, I remember doing my... Uh, what could be the reason? Is it because everyone else is looking at it? I think probably one, one reason could be face. It could be... Uh, <laughs> 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 um, uh, when I did my master's thesis eight years ago, uh, I interviewed some students why they, uh, why they uh, want to speak standard spoken English, standard English. And one of these uh, was a boy. Uh, uh, he, he says it is to give a good impression so that you can get girls. <laughs> <laughs> so I think on these public platforms, they uh, somehow or other they want to they, they want to impress people, and they and so they, they may tend to become more careful with their language. Mm, but they don't mind the smiley faces and the emoticon, emoticons. Yeah, that, that, that's part of their, their culture that they have used. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, besides uh, uh, contacting my students, uh, can you go down? Go down further. Uh, I used it. I used it also to to post uh, uh, comments and sayings and uh, and uh, you know, share with uh, share my personal experiences with them. Uh, further down. And uh, one one more thing I like to do is uh, like uh, the experiential learning. Uh, I like to do a lot of experiments at my at my center. At times, I get feedback from them, a lot of feedback. Like when I did uh, when I did uh, voluntary uh, trips overseas, and then I would get uh, and they would ask me when are you going and then, and all that. So so this I find this is a very very good platform for 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 learning and uh, and uh, sharing and bonding. And so so Facebook, uh, like the previous quote that we saw in the YouTube video. It, it, uh, all these social media, they are here to stay. The, 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 the important thing is how to make good use of it. And, uh, and I feel that as teachers, we, it is good that we go into their world as well and, uh, and uh, uh, get them to and interact with them. And in between, uh, we can inject uh, uh, positive values with them. Um, I can, can, you're <laughs> you can repeat that and emphasize that. <laughs> uh, can I see the, yeah. So to summarize, uh, I found that it is a very good platform for sharing, learning, and bonding. Uh, and um, at the same time, it's a very good channel for them to increase their self-confidence. Like the, like the Shi Liang that I mentioned, he's a very skinny and small boy in size. And yet on Facebook, I see that now he has a girlfriend. So it, it helps to draw them out of their shell. Then the other, uh, yeah, there, there were two, two things that I had misgivings about. One is it, its addictive nature. Uh, I would have to nag at them not to you know, use their phone, you know, I'll confiscate it. And uh, sometimes it was quite annoying to see 10 posts at the same, you know, one after the other from the same person. Uh, so they, they, they need to have some self-control when, when, they, when they do these. Um, uh, and at the, at the same time, I noticed sometimes they shared objectionable material. Uh, um, but um, perhaps one positive thing to, to, that I noticed was the feedback that people react, no, the, the reactions were uh, uh, not, not really all the time approving. And so there was not much of such, such material that, uh, such posts that I saw. So I can see some some form of discipline, I suppose, or self-censorship are noticeable. So it is, uh, so on, on the other hand, we, we shouldn't like uh, reject, we reject uh, the use of such sites and say that, oh, there's all uh, a teen stuff and, and no good. We really need to be there to guide them. And so um, one pedagogical, another pedagogical implication I could suggest is uh, when we do remedial lessons in schools, especially for the weaker students. I think uh, uh, using these social sites uh, will be a very uh, motivating and engaging platform for them to, to improve on their English. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Audrey. Yeah.
we would like to invite uh, Ms. Linda. She's actually uh, brought WordPress into her classroom and she would like to share with us. Um, hi everybody. So uh, moving on from what uh, Dr. Lu and uh, Mrs. Cheng have mentioned, so I've actually uh, applied uh, WordPress for my teaching and learning with students. Uh, so. Um WordPress is basically used for as, as a blog, as what you saw just now. Uh, blog in terms of whereby actually the students can uh, post in information. And actually, sh I will show you uh, uh, an example that I did with, uh, I intend to do with my students. And as an, as it can also be used as an online journal uh, with, uh, with, I mean, nowadays, uh, since there are lots of uh, paper journals that are going around, but I think with the future days that are yet to come, I believe online journal will be the uh, in trend in schools as well as in many publication centers. Uh, maybe uh, later our colleagues will be like showing you um, the kind of online journals that we are looking into which actually embeds video in it uh, with articles and as well as pictures in it. So it makes it more interactive for the readers rather than just having pictures alone when we print it out. Okay, so uh, as you just click on, okay, the, some of the benefits that uh, pupils obtain on using a WordPress uh, for, teach, for learning it basically sharpens their writing skills because they're going to write, as well as it enhances the student's learning experience because it's more, it's more from a paper, uh, from more than a rather than being a pen and a paper, they start using WordPress for writing. And um, actually, you can have graded assignments for pupils whereby they can write, and you can actually uh, give them rubrics whereby. They are able to, we are able to grade them. And last but not the least, I think we are able to relate easier to the pupils because they, because they, they belong to the dig, digital learning age. Yeah. So the next slide, please. And this is one of the, um, the WordPress that I created that was inspired uh, during my sales camp. Actually, uh, this, uh, since I found that doing WordPress was kind of easy as student teachers. I'm sure when we go down, go back to school, I'm sure this, this is also going to be, uh, I mean like, become, will be easy for the pupils. Okay, this is actually a WordPress that I designed it for one of my uh, courses here. Okay, so uh, this WordPress actually um, is on teaching to write English compositions using WordPress. Yeah, so can you just click on the blog? It'll. Okay, so. So this is how it looks like. So my, my main aim was, is basically to use a poem, Daffodils. Uh, can you just click on the, the poem, Daffodils? Yeah. So poem, Daffodils by William Wordsworth. Wordsworth. I myself am inspired by this poem. It's one of my favorite poems. And um, to me, when I read this poem, I can really see uh, what Wordsworth is trying to tell with the similes and the imageries that is being used here. So I want to try to convince my students that in order to write a good compo, you should need to have a good uh, English with adjectives, uh, with similes, and uh, with all the language features to make it interesting for the reader. So I'm trying to use a, comp uh, a poem to teach my pupils on writing a good composition. And uh, once the pupils read this poem and get the idea that, uh, and get convinced that you know, uh, similes and imageries are, are good to be used in writing, they are there then, uh, just go back to them. Go up, go up. Yeah, they just, uh, the home, just click on the home. Yeah. So the pupils will post, this a blog, will put on their post. Okay, so they work in groups and they write down. So this is just an example of uh, one, one of the students who actually was, has been on a Star Cruise work go and they write the experience uh, uh, on it. So the title actually I'm giving my students is like my trip my, uh, on to, to a favorite location. So this is one on Star Cruise will go, oh, and the other one is on a uh, trip to God's own country. This is one of the one of my favorite places of of uh, of having uh, backwaters. In the backwaters of in uh, in Kerala in a place called in India. There is this called something called the boat house. It's a very interesting one that I actually saw it online. So uh, so if ever a child were to take a trip, so how would they describe it? So this is what I I I would like to teach. And um, if ever you see, uh, like what Dr. Lu was mentioning about the mentioning about the comments, so the pupils will be commenting. Uh, yeah, so you can just click on the comments, yeah? The pupils will be commenting uh, the peers' work. So the rationale behind it is um, when you comment one another's work, it actually enhances their critical thinking. This actually belongs to a higher order, uh, higher order thinking of the, the Bloom's taxonomy. So the pupils are given rubrics 
If you just, just go up a little bit, yeah, the pupils are given rubrics for commenting. So they will follow the rubrics accordingly and they can comment on their friends and peers' work. Yeah, so um, to me, I, I, I designed this lesson uh, with the confidence that when I go back to schools, I'm sure I can achieve this because uh, pupils are really bored of writing down their compos on paper. And when it comes to a composition lesson, I, the pupils really, really don't like it because they are being just asked to write uh, for years together from, from P1. They just keep on writing and writing and writing with pen and paper. So to make it more, uh, more interesting and, and, uh, and engaging for the pupils, uh, I intend to use WordPress to teach compositions. Yeah, And another feature that will uh, enable me to teach will also be the like button that what Dr. Lu had mentioned. If you just go back to the... Uh, Blog, uh, just go back to the blog. There is also a, a like uh, button. Well, uh, it's it's not been. I did manage to like like one of the posts, but it, it's not been reflected. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as I mean, like when you like somebody's work, uh, the children kind of think. Uh, children kind of feel it's really a nice thing because you tend to like somebody's work um, uh, and what they have written, and it really boosts their moral confidence. Yeah. And and just go on, go back to the the slides, Deslin. Yeah. And to make things easier, if I were uh, the mobile apps, to make things easier, the children can actually use the mobile apps that's found in almost all the smartphones, and um, to do their blogging. And uh, of course, in primary schools, since. Um, iPhones are, I mean, smartphones are not allowed. However, in secondary or even in JC and unis, I believe uh, the pupils can try this. Okay, I myself had tried this during my uh, cell scam when Dr. Lu had actually encouraged uh, all of us to uh, try using the uh, try using the apps in uh, the the smartphones. And so I just downloaded. It's a free apps. And if you see my, I have actually a few blogs there in my mobile apps, right starting from the cell scam. Yeah, so right starting the cell scam and traveled all the way to the latest newsletter that I've actually uploaded. So during your, I mean like during your travel back home, you can actually uh, use this to, uh, to update your whatever you need to post it or you can also post your comments. Yeah, and it also makes it easier for as teachers or as educators during our way back home, you can mark your students' work also rather than sitting down at one place and <laughs> marking. Yeah, so I kind of found this useful and thought it would be good to share with you. So I would like now to uh, pass uh, time down to Razif, uh, whereby uh, Razif, or uh, Deslin and Halimi, they will take you through their award-winning blog, The Crimson Comet, yeah, that they created during the, the sales camp. Yeah. Okay, a very good morning to um, all of you. I am Deslin, and these are my two group members, Halimi and uh, Razif. And we have been uh, honoured to be chosen by our fellow peers as the their favourite uh, digital newsletter. So, um, three of us actually, uh, for our sales camp the, for the two weeks, we actually decided on, uh, there were three modules, um, as what Dr. Lu has mentioned, but we've decided on digital newsletter as we thought that it would um, actually help us in our future teaching when we learn how to write a newsletter. All right, so what is um, the biggest takeaway for all of us is that we thought that um, pen and paper writing was actually like how we were taught last, uh, we were taught last time, paper and pen, but now it can be so um, engaging and interesting when we use it online. All right, as you can see some of our peers, their comments. Uh, 
participants from the NIE canteen, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's uh, our fellow peers. Fellow peers, so, willing yeah. volunteers uh, from there. And, uh, well, this was done in a video format. And we, we were looking forward as in digital newsletters in the future. It's probably not going to be like pen and paper, but in video style. All right. So, we have... We found our whole journey very interesting from the time that we started to think about the topic that we wanted to do, which was the importance of national education. And we, yeah. So later on, we will um, pass on to Razif to uh, show the video for us. Yeah. Actually, during the video, we had to take in uh, take to consideration our pronunciation, the way we asked the questions, whether the language was appropriate, and when we craft out the questions, it also had to be of standard English, like what we were thought. This is a uh, consistent throughout our newsletter. So, no matter it being in a video form or us writing it down, um, our key concern is still language, which um, that is what we are supposed to be. Um, advocating as uh, teachers. Hi, uh, I'm I'm Halimi. Okay, uh, basically I'll, I'll be presenting on how easy actually to to do up this uh, newsletter. You mean I mean like why do we actually need to use uh, WordPress? There's a lot of other platforms we could use, but uh, when we started the course, uh, I re we realized that um, it's the ease of how you can get your students to upload videos, photos, and at the same time. You don't have to worry about how you actually can get feedback from the from the rest of the students. Uh, in a way, if you you can see in every post, we we are the students are able to leave comments like through different platforms. Uh, they can like it, they can post it on Twitter. I mean, uh, it's very easy for them to, to for for the readers to generate feedback. And again, this will move. We can move away from the traditional newsletter where it's all the paper, and we can actually have more media to to make the newsletter interesting. Uh, like 
uh, Dr. Lu said, moving on to the newsletter of the future, perhaps. Uh, and for, we can show them some pages, perhaps, below. Uh, it's the ease of how you can link up these pages uh, through separate posts on different articles. And again, you can generate feedback from there. And uh, this, this was what we did. Uh, we spotted certain areas around Singapore grammar mistakes, you know, and we can, yeah, we can show, yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay. Basically, is how easy it is for the students to navigate through the, through the WordPress, through, through the through the site, without thinking of all this back end programming thing that most probably we won't have time when we when we start teaching. Uh, so uh, it's easy to upload. Uh, all the all different medias and uh, other than that, you can... But you must use wordpress.com, you cannot use wordpress.org because when I use wordpress.org, I will have to think of javascript, that kind of thing that's uh, a little bit more difficult and time consuming. Something like that. Yeah, but basically it's how easy it is to use the wordpress for teaching and learning at the same time. So, Razif? Uh, hi, my name is Razif. Um, for basically, um, for my part, is uh, we'd like to show you this uh, component whereby uh, WordPress allows us to leave videos as part of comments. So it allows you to leave comments both in written form and also in video. Maybe we can just play a short one. Hi guys, uh, we just look at your blog and uh, personally I feel that the, uh, the blog content is uh, very interesting. It's very uh, relevant to our student teachers and also we are trying to address the conservative issue which is good because uh, of the influx of younger teachers that we have nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, personally, I felt that the silly questions were appropriate and uh, were uh, phrased uh, as simply for teachers to answer but I think that the group should look into the language aspect of the digital newsletter, uh, your sentence structures which uh, some of them we have found to uh, be a bit, probably you can uh, try to tweak it or change it to be more uh, professional. Yeah, so uh, I think Dr. Lu pointed out that um, this is interesting, uh, especially for us. Um, it gives an alternative for people who, or for students who are more comfortable verbalizing their thoughts as opposed to writing it down. And also, uh, as a, from the point of view of a teacher, uh, it, like I was saying just now, uh, it gives us uh, a platform to actually reflect on how we give feedback to our students. And perhaps uh, we can improve on the way we give feedback. Um, as you can, maybe you may not be able to see from that video, but we actually put in a lot of thought into um, g giving a positive feedback, um, choosing the right words and uh, our stance when giving our feedbacks. So uh, that process took a while before uh, before we actually put it up on the blog. Yeah, so um, we find that to be very useful, especially for WordPress. And perhaps uh, later on when we are teaching, our students can also engage in this process whereby they comment and critique on a blog. Yeah, and I think with that, we've come to the end of our part. Maybe I'd like to pass it back to Dr. Lu. Thank you very much for the student teachers present their part. I will just wrap up everything. So um, as you watch the video, social media is already pervasive in our life, uh, but it is really, really up to us to decide whether we want to use it as a tool or let it control our lives without us knowing anything about it. Today, I'm, sh I'm sharing with you what we did for the sales course, not to promote social media, but just to share with you what we have done and... Uh, Perhaps what we can do for the future, maybe some advice from you guys as well, uh, what we can do even better in the future. And I would like to actually hear from some of you who have already used Facebook uh, in your courses. To make a very long story short, one way I've used Facebook is to get my students to role play. Rather than be themselves, they, they be someone else. Role so, play? So That's I've had literature students uh, role playing a character in, uh, in Merchant of Venice. Merchant so, of Venice. Yeah, so they, so they, they, up to let's say role play Portia, and then they get the boys in the class to woo her, you know, by by way of uh, you know, figuring out what Portia might like to read, what Portia might like at the time of the, you know, in Shakespeare's time, 
I've had PE students, student teachers who uh, role play, um, um, dietitians who have to give advice to Ian Thorpe or, or Michael Phelps, you know, in terms of what kind of diet you should have, uh, what kind of exercises to do, or how to recuperate from an injury. Uh, um, that, that's one way. This is actually not my idea, this is what they come up with on their own. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm very creative student teachers here. I would personally love to include literature in, in cells if I'm allowed to, yeah. And uh, how about this gentleman over here? Do you use Facebook? Oh, I use Facebook just for social purposes, not for teaching. Oh, not for right. teaching, for social purposes. Okay. Any others who would like to share with us about WordPress or Facebook? If not, Pratima? Yes, I would like to end my talk now. Thank you very much. And uh, special thanks to our student teachers for coming here. Razid, Desmond, Linda, and Harini. Uh, uh, thanks for your